Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ. So today is the festival of the Holy Trinity, and we are back in Matthew's Gospel for our Gospel reading for the first time in a number of weeks. Uh, and our text today is often referred to as the Great Commission. In a sense, this Great Commission is like a mission statement that Jesus shares with his disciples uh, immediately before his return to the Father in heaven. Uh, and it is an imperative. Uh, if you remember from your high school English, an imperative is a command. There's several other commands that Jesus offers in the New Testament Gospels. When he first met his disciples, uh, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, there by the Sea of Galilee, uh, he instructed them, follow me, a command, an imperative. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. On another occasion, when there was a, a legal expert who approached him and said, teacher, uh, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus responded this way, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so on these two commandments, he said, hang all the laws and the prophets, all of the law and the prophets. In our text today, there are four imperatives or commands. And let me just read those out to you. Go, make disciples, baptize, and teach. That's our mission. Almost always at the end of worship, we are sent out of the sanctuary, out into the world to do that. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. But before we are sent, what have we spent the whole hour doing? We've spent it in worship. Doing the exact same things that Jesus' disciples did when they Jesus on that, on that mountaintop in Galilee. They worshiped him. At least some of them did, for the text also has a troubling word. It says that some of them doubted. Matthew's gospel begins and ends with worship. Now, technically, it doesn't begin with worship. The first chapter of Matthew is a genealogy tracing uh, Jesus' birth all the way back to Father Abraham. But when you get into the story of of Jesus' birth, it's the story of the Magi who came to visit Jesus. And what did they come to do? The text says that they came to pay homage to him. They came to worship him. And so here at the end of Matthew's Gospel, the disciples gather with him on the mountain in Galilee for the purpose of worship. But once again, that troubling word shows up but some doubted. They doubted. Why did they doubt? That really does seem troubling and bothersome, but it shouldn't. The, the disciples, after all, were very human, and they had shown that humanity many other times when they did not grasp what Jesus was trying to say to them. On one occasion, Jesus actually referred to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You may have already heard me mention uh, that it's very easy to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus inside the church building. Part of me actually wonders if that's why some of us want to return to worship inside the church building, because it's easy or because it's about us, because we miss our friends. Well, sure, we miss our friends and, and family, but worship isn't about us. I've heard people say, well, I didn't like worship today. Guess what? <laughs> That's not what worship is about. Sometimes we should not like worship. Did, did everyone like what Jesus had to say to them? Uh, of course not. We don't have to like worship. Worship is something that we do for God, not for us. I think it's easy 
to have faith inside of a church building. But certainly, COVID-19 has forced us, has forced the church out of our building. And our text today seems to support that notion that, in fact, Jesus actually wants us to get out of the building. Jesus told the disciples to go, to make disciples, to baptize, and to teach. He told the disciples to follow him. Very rarely did Jesus ever take his disciples into church buildings. Occasionally, he went into a synagogue. Occasionally, he went into the temple. But more often than not, whenever Jesus went into church buildings, he stirred up trouble. And so where did Jesus go? He went to where the marginalized people were. He went to the poor. He went to the blind and lame. He went to those people who were possessed by demons. He met with lepers. And yes, he, he even met with Samaritans. Samaritans, those whom his own people did not like. These last few months, we've lived in some interesting times, to say the least. Furthermore, these last two weeks have been interesting times. Just think about what's happened over the last couple of weeks in our country. We've continued to live in the midst of the throes of a pandemic. Saturday a week ago, we watched Americans go back up in space in an American-built spacecraft for the first time with the notion that within two to four years we'll actually return to the moon. Amazing. And of course, we've also watched in these last two weeks as our nation has been split in two because of racial hatred and protest and violence and looting. It's kind of amazing how this text today deals with all three of those things. It's sort of its own holy trinity, so to speak. Now, the first one is the easiest, returning to space. What was it? Last week we celebrated the ascension of Jesus, when Jesus on the mountaintop appeared to blast off, to go back to heaven, to go back to his Father. And so Matthew's gospel text today is set right there just before his ascension, just before his return. I believe Jesus' blast off into space was much more impressive than that of the Dragon spacecraft last week in Florida. The second component of this trinity of sorts is the pandemic. And I've already sort of dealt with that, that the church is not a building and that Jesus was at his best when he was outside of church buildings. And the third, and the, perhaps the most difficult, the one that's the most upsetting, is the one of the racial hate, hatred and anger and protest and looting. This may sound controversial, and perhaps it is, but Jesus was controversial. Things he said eventually got him crucified. Jesus himself protested. Jesus, if you recall, went into the temple one day. He angered the religious authorities when, even though he didn't necessarily loot, but he did overturn the money changers' tables and stopped the business as usual of what was going on inside the temple that day. And probably those religious authorities looked upon Jesus with the same disdain that some have looked upon the protesters in the last week and a half. Furthermore, and even more disturbing perhaps to us, is the fact that Jesus loved everybody. He even loved the people that were trying to do away with him. And worse than that, 
Jesus not only told us, suggested to us, but he commanded us to love our neighbor as ourself. He also, in other places, commanded us to love our enemies. He didn't just command us, he actually showed us. Think about his words from the cross. The very people who were crucifying Jesus, Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed to his Father and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. I'd urge you to think about that. Think about how controversial Jesus really was and how it was people in the church who understood him the least. It's easy and popular to jump on the bandwagon of hatred toward other people, especially other people that you really don't know very well, other people that you can categorize and say things about. But today we are called together to worship the triune God. We are called together to have our hardened hearts transformed so that we can love people that we don't like. It's easy to love people that you like. But Jesus calls us to love people that we don't like to love people for whom we don't understand, the people that we might disagree with. In the Gospel reading today, our mission statement, the first word was go. And I think about the word go, and I think go in this context means to go outside your comfort, comfort zone. Perhaps it's a good time to go outside your comfort zone and have a conversation with someone that you don't know well. Someone who may be a different skin color than yours. You know, folks, we've, we've got to come together on this. We can't pretend to be Christians on Sunday morning and then behave toward other people the way we do on Monday through Saturday. So we have to go. The second thing is to become di- to, to make disciples. And I'm suggesting that before we can make disciples, we have to be discipled. That we have to spend time sitting at the foot of Jesus, learning from Him. Not only what He said, but looking at what He did. And remember, He left us with another command. If you want to follow Me, Pick up your cross. The third, we are called to baptize. And again, I would suggest that we, if we're going to baptize others, we need to remember our baptism. And if we remember our baptism, we'll remember that Jesus came and accepted and loved us before we were ever capable of accepting or loving Him. And finally, we are to teach And the best way to teach is not with words, but by our own actions, by the way we show love toward other people. So today we are in the midst of worship. But some doubted.